Welcome to another Sunday morning of beautiful parking lot worship, people. If you are joining us online, we are so happy to have you, equally as happy as those in the parking lot. Welcome. We have a beautiful day today. For once, I'm not standing out here in the rain to film this. What a treat. We've got this lovely little setup. Look at this. Look at this cuteness. Can you believe it? Look what our hardworking people have done. How nice is that? This is our second go today. We have another service at 8. It's great to have you all here in the hot, hot sun. Holy cow. Everybody's masked. Everybody's distant. And we are ready to go. is in there playing the keyboard somewhere behind all those signs. Thank you, Deb. safe week at home. As we've said before, if you'd love to join us here, you're welcome to. On hot days like this, the policy is that you are welcome to roll your windows down so long as you have a face mask on. We want to still be safe. All right, here we go. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship, and it's not raining. Kind of a nice change, but we've also discovered it's also very, very warm out here as well. I was going to wear a jacket and all. Forget that. It is just too warm. We're glad you're here to worship together today. As you may have seen, I assume you have seen, uh, both an email that I sent out and video as well, about what our worship plan is going forward. Through the end of this month, so including next Sunday, we will have worship at 8 and 10.30 here in the parking lot. Both worship services will be identical. Starting in June, we will have 8 o'clock, will include traditional hymns, and then at 9.30, it will be the same worship service, only contemporary songs in place of the uh, traditional hymns. That way we can try to reach as many of our congregation as we possibly can and also we had a group that recorded four different versions this week of Holden Evening Prayer, and those will also be posted each week during June as well. It is still the safest thing to do, and it still falls in accordance with the guidelines that are set out by Kenosha County, that we not worship together in our facility. This isn't so bad though either, and this will work. We, throughout all of this, we have been praying together, and we have been worshiping together, we're just doing it in different ways than what we're used to. And we're glad that you're here with us this morning. Our worship this morning, we begin with the song, You Are Mine. I will trust you in the silence. I will lift you from. Thank you. 
God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading for this morning is from John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words to the, to the disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given me authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given me. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the word. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf, I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This week, I've had outdoor ministry on my mind. Because this is the time of year, typically, when our outdoor ministries begin their summer staff training. It's an interesting time. You have returning camp staff who are so excited to be back together again. I mean, I witnessed over and over again these returning staff members running towards each other and leaping into each other's arms, just so excited to see one another again. And then over here, you've got the new staff, the ones who kind of stand back and watch all that's going on, watching all this embracing happening and, you know, kind of feeling a little bit left out in all of that and wondering, will I ever be embraced that way as well? Will that ever happen to me during the summer? People are catching up, getting used to what's going on, talking about what skits they're going to do, and that new person is wondering, am I gonna learn all the, the verses to these songs? Am I ever gonna get these skits right? Why am I here? Did I make a big mistake in answering this call to come and be a camp counselor? It goes on and on. A lot of uncertainty happens. As the summer goes on, yeah, they learn all the songs. And they learn all of the skits. And they make new friends. By the end of the summer, they're sick of those songs. They're sick of doing those same skits over and over again. In fact, they start adding things to the skits that are only funny to the staff members. It's all inside jokes, and so they're all laughing uproariously, and the kids are going, ah, ah, like they're supposed to laugh. And then suddenly it comes to an end. It's amazing how nine weeks of camp, two weeks of staff training, those 11 weeks just blow by. Now in the middle of it, I found that I had to help motivate them. And so I admit this is really, really cheesy, okay? But if I ask any of my staff members, if I said it this way, oh gosh, I forget what week is this. What, what week of camp is this? There's only one correct answer to that question. If it is week five on the calendar, 
The answer is not five. It is not week five. The answer is it is week one. While it may be week five for my staff, for the kids, it is their first week. And it's a motivational piece to keep reminding them that it's their first week. And we have to make that special. Especially in the second half of the season, the response to that question would be, it's the first week. You know, we get it. Don't keep drilling that into us. But suddenly it's done. And there's one last ritual to summer camp that you have to do, and that is the final campfire. And at the time when the staff gather together and they sing those songs again, even the ones they can't stand anymore, they sing them. They do the skits just for themselves. And they talk. And they sing some other songs. And they honestly don't want to leave. They have Holy Communion. They still don't want to leave. Because they don't want it to be over. Because now the questions are, what do I do next? Now that camp's over and I've gotten into this frame of mind and this way of operating on a daily basis, what do we do now when we have to go back out into the world? Our reading this week is the last piece of what we have been talking about the last few weeks, this final discourse, this final address to the disciples of Jesus. A reminder that this is happening during the Last Supper. So it's very different from a lot of the images that we see of what happens when Jesus prays during this time period. A lot of you may even have the painting in your house where Jesus is on his knees, his hands folded, leaning on a big rock, and there's a ray of light from the heavens coming on him. In John, that is not the case. In John's gospel, Jesus is still sitting in the upper room with the disciples. And he has moved from giving them instructions to now praying with them and for them in their presence. Something not many of us are used to, having other people praying for us while we are present. And I'm guessing the disciples were no different in this stretch either. This prayer that Jesus does is an important prayer. And it has some really, really good stuff in it. Not just its specificity for these disciples, but for us as well. One of my favorite parts is where he kind of lays it out towards the end, where he says, I am no longer in the world. It's almost as if Jesus has one foot out the door, so to speak. He knows what's happening. He knows what's going to come in just the next few hours, that he will be arrested and tortured. But he says, but they are in the world. These disciples who I have trained and who I have been with for the last three years, they're in the world. It's as if a three-year summer camp with Jesus has come to a close. This is kind of it, the big farewell. He asked that God protect them. In the name that you have given me. So in other words, in my name, in the name of Jesus, protect them. And protect them so that they can be one, just as you and I are one. Man, we all know how divided of a nation we are. We're divided politically. We're divided by faith. We're divided by ethnicity, by power, by rank in society, by wealth. We're divided in so many ways. This call from Jesus is more than just a call to the disciples to be one. It's for us to take all of that stuff, and while it is who we are as individuals, to put above all of that stuff that we are followers of Christ, and we have lots of work to do as Christ's body. And we're doing it. As I pointed out in that letter that I sent out, We've raised nearly 2,000 pounds of food in the last couple of months. Over these last few months, your generosity has kept our finances in good shape. Over these last few months, we have still worshiped together, whether it's in a parking lot or online, and we have prayed together both here 
and online as well. We have been Christ Church all during this time, and we will continue to be that. We will continue to pray. We will, we will continue to reach out to the poor in our community and provide assistance because that's what Jesus calls us to do. That's what he's saying to these disciples, and that's what he's saying to us as well. Let's keep doing it. It's going to be different, but keep doing it. And do it in my name. Yes, do it because it gives you a good, warm feeling inside. Absolutely. Never will tell anybody to, oh, you know, don't feel proud of what you just did. Do feel proud that you gave food to help those who are hungry. But feel proud also in the fact that Jesus calls us to be. Everything changes for these disciples when Jesus finishes preaching and when he finishes teaching and when he finishes praying this prayer. Because now he'll be arrested. Now he'll be crucified. It all kind of happens together. All the pieces are in place now. Jesus is telling them one more time. One last time. Do not be afraid. I am with you. And I will continue to be with you. And I believe that in this time that we have all been going through these last few months together and separately, Jesus is with us. That spirit is with us. May you feel that spirit. May it empower you in your lives to keep doing all it is that Jesus has asked us to do. Amen. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promise, hope, of healing, and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places and praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one, as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable and redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without support of family, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. We pray for all who suffer from injury or illness or affliction. Especially we pray for Abby, Gordon, and Diana, and all those we name in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us share that peace with one another. Wave People online, if you're watching online, drop a little peace be with you in the comments. If you're watching during the week, it's never too late. Also, at this time, I invite you to get your um, bread, your great peace that you brought with you together as we enter into our short service. As we've been doing in the past uh, few weeks, our communion liturgy is based off the psalm, Here is bread, here is wine. And we will sing the first two verses, then the words of institution, then the chorus, third verse.
you're watching online, uh, our policy as a church now is that we are inviting you to take communion from your home, so grab anything you have. Grab a LaCroix and a <laughs> Pop-Tart. I don't know. Uh, Jesus' body is with you and his blood is with you. body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper he took a cup of wine. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please share with the people in your time. If you're watching from home, whether live or throughout the week, join us in this holy meal. Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing song today, very fitting one for the day, In Christ There Is No East or West.
have it, folks. Week one zillion of home worship. If you didn't know, our whole usher team has been dispatched as these orange vest wearing uh, parking lot attendants, and they're doing a great job. Look at these orange vests. Look at these faithful people of God out here. We've got a big old extendy uh, offering basket, a little drive-by offering. Hey there. Wave hi, you're on, you're on TV. Nice to see you. People, I didn't say hi. Uh-oh, the camera drooped. Hey there. <laughs> Girl, what happened with this camera? Uh-uh. No, ma'am. There we go. Woo, that was scary. Really messed it up there for a second. People, if you're watching online, we love you. We hope you're having a safe time at home or abroad. Do you remember once upon a time when Memorial Day meant something and we were like, hey, have a great three-day weekend. Now every day is the weekend. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great time with your families this weekend. Uh, stay safe out there. If you haven't yet joined us for parking lot worship, we're here every Sunday at 8 and 10 a.m. Or 10.30, rather. Next month, we're switching to 8 o'clock and 9.30, uh, with a contemporary service being 9.30. So if you haven't joined us yet, we'd love for you to join then. Let's see if I can do a selfie again without it tripping. People, so great to have you. We love you. And uh, keep it real. All right, everyone. Until next time.